Hi, I'm Gary, the Water Guy, and I'm in the Water Filter e-store and the Water Store in Midland, Ontario. Today we're talking about repairs and maintenance of an Aquamaster high efficiency water softener like this one. Specifically, we're talking about how to clean the flow control and the brine piston. Troubleshooting may have indicated an issue with the brine piston, and uh, it's inside here, so it needs to be cleaned out. So to start that, we, we put the water softener into bypass mode. Once it's in bypass mode, we hold down the regenerate button for five seconds, and that uh, will put the water softener into regeneration, which, will, which would release any pressure that's inside the water softener. You can see it says going to one. Um, and uh, once it gets to one, then we can uh, discon disconnect the controller to get better access to the brine piston. We're also gonna be um, removing this line here so we can unscrew this. Now typically, this brine connection here, brine line connection, is normally just hand tight, but if it's a little bit more than that on yours, then you can use a, a pair of pliers or a wrench to remove it. So it says it's in backwash one now, so at this stage what we can do is we can um, unplug it, remove the controller, and just uh, pull it back like that out of the way. So here's where the brine piston is inside here. And uh, to get better access to the float, and uh, if there's an issue with the brine piston, maybe there's some debris inside there that's causing some issues, there may also be some debris inside the float. So it probably is a good idea at this point uh, to remove that also. So if we just pry up this cap a little bit, gives us a little better access. So. We'll use a Phillips screwdriver to remove the, uh, the piston from the uh, drive-in cap assembly. So there's one at the bottom and one at the top. Okay, so this, this water softener is on a chair, so that's why it's wobbling a little bit but uh, yours at home won't wobble nearly as much. You just have to be careful with the screws here that they don't fall inside the brine tank and then you'll have to go uh, fishing them out. And we'll take the next one here. All right, great. All right, so the, the brine piston is inside here, but uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna let that fall out. And then uh, I'm going to remove these two screws here so we get access inside to the line, brine line flow control. Just inside here. That aside and set this aside. Can remove that screw too. All right. So now we get access inside here again. Be careful of, of the components in here. So that, that little black, um, looks like an O-ring or a seal at the bottom, that's the brine line flow control. So what you need to do is uh, make sure that the hole in the center of that brine line flow control is clear. So you could use a wooden toothpick like this. You don't want to use a paper clip or anything metal that might elongate that hole. Here's the O-ring here, so we have to make sure that stays in place. But you can see you can lift it up like that and that would make sure that it is um, clean. Now when you put it back, it has to go back the same way that it came out. That is that the concave side has to be up as it is here. So once you've cleaned that out, then what you can do is uh, you can reassemble the whole unit. So then we can reassemble these two pieces. So they're gonna go together like this. So you can see it would be positioned here. So we can put the two screws back in. Again being So then we're gonna put the piston back inside here. Now before we reassemble this, what we would do at this point is you'd pull out the float and you'd wash all this out. Because like I say, if there was some, uh, some debris that got inside and that may have caused an issue with the brine line flow control, you know, it may very well be inside here too. So it's a good idea to flush all this out at this point. 
and then we can look at putting it all back together. So there is an o-ring here, make sure you put that back in there and as you can see there's some plumbers clear silicone grease on here so I always recommend that that is applied, reapplied uh, to make sure that you have a nice uh, seal. So one of the screws goes on the top here, like so. Make sure the screws are tight. Then what we can do is uh, connect this back to the float. Make sure the float gets positioned incorrectly again. This is the hex nut that holds the float in place. So we can put that hex nut back on there. Hand tight is typically tight enough. For, and same with this brine connection here. It needs to be hand tight, but a tight hand tight. So if you're in doubt, um, tighten it by hand as best you can, then give it a little bit more with a, a, a pair of pliers or a wrench to make sure it doesn't leak. All right, and then we'll put the controller back on, like so. And we can plug the controller back in Once we plug it back in, it's going to say going home. Um, on its, once it gets back to home, then we can open up the valve, the bypass valve back into service, check for leaks. Assuming there's no leaks, then we can press the regenerate button, hold it down for five seconds so it regenerates, and after it regenerates, you'll have soft water again. If you like what you saw today, please click the subscribe button. That way you'll be notified of all the new videos that become available on this channel. If you like some more information, go to our websites, either thewaterstoremidland.com or thewaterfiltereastore.com. And again, I'm Gary the Water Guy from the Water Store in Midland, Ontario. Thanks for watching.